And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. Whisper dialogue. Whisper dialogue. Crackle, crackle. Mommy doesn't love you. I'm scared. Did I scare <laughs> you? <laughs> I, okay, I so got... now stretch that to a hundred minutes. Boom! You got yourself a movie. There you go. Okay, so uh, it's time, Bunny. It's time. It's time. Yes, Bunny, my friend, my brother, my some third thing. It is time once again to move once more into the breach. Dear friends, because it is time for this podcast to shimmy shake our way to the third and final part of the podcast, and it is said third part, we're in, we finally and eventually get around to discussing our low-cost, high-fiber, same great taste, but now with twice the calories, movie of the week! And this week, we are finally discussing the film. That some people call, call the scariest film of all time. And some people are calling nigh unwatchable shit. Yes, it's time to discuss the 2023 experimental supernatural horror film. Skin a rink Woo! Maxwell, high five! Give me a skin of a ring sock. day. That's right. Point, 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 point. Skin of a ring. Where you want to go to the van? Where did you find in the van? <gasps> what? Reba McIntyre, Oklahoma girl. You guys are clearing out the van. Oh, I'm so glad I'm in here doing the podcast. Okay. Uh, hold on. What did you find in a box? Stuart Little too, not Little Stuart too. This is a guy named Stuart, and he's just really freaking short. Uh, so Bonnie, how much did you love it? Wow. My 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 answer, like e even as if. Even it's complicated. It's just complicated. Uh, I I don't see how anybody could have been scared by this at all. Okay. Did Jeannie see it? Because usually Jeannie watches these movies with you. I was interested. Yes. yes. What did she have to say about it? It's complicated. <laughs> but I also think that, that that is a that is a big point to bring up. Like this is not a movie to watch alone. You need to watch I, it somebody with you. I watched it alone on a dark and rainy January night by myself in a theater that was empty. And I was high as balls. Yes. And I was still, I was still laughing my ass off at the movie Skinnamarink. Yeah, I have a hard, I, I, I have a hard time being too hard on some mook who is just like us, who yeah. made a movie and got a lot of traction out of it. So right from there, good on you, mate. God bless you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You you accomplish something. We don't know what it is, but it's something. Okay? Yeah. okay. It is definitely not a horror movie. At all. It's barely a movie. 
I, I, I don't see how you could really call it a movie. But at the same time, given enough edibles, my brain was having a lot of fun with this movie. Because you look at nothing for so long that you think you start seeing something. And you and right, you're trying to impose order on just chaos and random shots. Yeah. You don't you know, see anyone's face in the entire film. The closest I could get to any kind of meaning for this movie is that it was an experimentation of what may or may not be creepy. So, like, okay, let's get a weird angle on a doorway, and it'll be brightly lit. And we won't have any sound for this. Okay, let's have another shot of another doorway, but it's darkly lit. Okay, well, that seems more creepier. Okay, so let's try the bright doorway with some creepy sounds. Okay, and then let's try the dark hallway with some upbeat Max Fleischer cartoon music. Yep. You know, I'm like, okay, so that's balancing out the creepiness of the two. Like, it looks like it looks like just weird experimental shots roughly along that theme. Yeah, basically. And just sort of increased from there. Okay, now let's have let's have a shot of Legos with a flickering light, and let's add a creepy voice to this one. Yeah. You know? So like I, I couldn't I couldn't tell anybody that this is good or they should watch it. O- all I can say is in my drug addled brain, my brain had a lot of fun trying to impose yeah. order on this movie. I've, and I, I would like, like to watch it. I would like to watch it a couple of more times to come up with a theory about what is actually going on in this movie. And then I want to no, hit the fucking no internet. <laughs> There's no theory to this. It's just madness. Yeah. You actually liked it a lot better than I thought you were going to. Oh man, looking at the trailer, I thought it was gonna I was gonna hate it because like all of those shots, especially in the trailer, just look like so, just look like pretentious art crap. Because see, let me let me let me let me take you through this. Um, I thought that you might not want to talk about the movie. Um, um, so I have a number of other topics for us that we could talk about instead of Skinnamarink. If at any point in time. During this conversation, you just wanted to tap out. <laughs> One, two, three, four. I've got five other topics that we can discuss. Well, I don't know. I don't see how there's a whole hell of a lot to discuss here. You know, like what's what's to discuss? Like the riveting ceiling light fixture sh- scene. You yeah. know, is that? Something worth discussing. <laughs> yeah, you messaged me now that I've seen the trailer. Maybe we just do Glenn or Glenda again. Yeah. Which was hilarious. Man, our podcast. But then I did everything this. I could to go in with an open mind, you know, to yeah. try like, okay, I'm going to give this movie <clears throat> a fair chance. And I think I succeeded. You did. You did. Bunny kind of liked it. Uh, 
See, I, I don't think. It, see, I don't think that's correct, though. Bunny kind of liked but, it. I don't think that's really right. I, I kind of like the effect it had. The, the flashing lights. In the, the film. The flashing it lights. Gave, No, he's right there. Um, I am so high right now. Bunny, are you there? I love Max Fleischer. I'm just getting yeah. into the Max Fleischer. Yeah, I keep. I I'm so happy that I threw this together. These uh, um, cartoons. These are all cartoons that were used in the movie. When I was when I watched it for the first time. I saw the credit in the beginning that said all of the cartoons used in this movie are in public domain and were downloaded from archive.org. I'm like, okay, there is a 50% chance that Bimbo's initiation is in this. Yeah. And so by the time he popped up, I was like, I marked out like I was at WrestleMania. <laughs> oh my god that's bimbo bimbo i was so i was so happy i was so I, happy i got such a laugh out of that out of that opening credit about archive.org and i was like and i was like because because like that is amateurish as shit yeah it is <laughs> you yeah, know Mm -hmm. And just because you get something out of off of archive.org does not necessarily mean that it is in the public domain. I'm sorry, yep. that's kind of a myth. Archive.org is very kind of sloppy with what they consider in the public yep. domain. In mm -hmm. example, uh, I was I was working on a short film and I wanted some jazz music. And I particularly wanted crappy public domain jazz music. So I went searching for, for, for something on archive.org. And what I found was some dude's podcast where like, okay, yeah, that podcast, I guess, is in the public domain. But the Miles Davis music that he's playing in the podcast is not yeah. in the fucking public domain. I can't use that. Yeah. <laughs> but that's archive.org. Yep, it is. 100%. This is a Canadian horror movie, and I think that's why this movie is in no way scary. It's like, uh, because Canadians are so polite. Yes. That it, the whole movie is just Hey, hi. Uh, I'd like to jump scare you. If that's okay. Uh, no? Okay, I'll just be over here by the light fixture. Because <laughs> they're, so, they're so polite. Were there were they jump scares? There's, there's, there's one jump scare when the phone rings, and it scared the crap out of me. There were places where I was expecting Expecting a jump scare. Oh yeah, yeah. Like when so, we were looking at that little girl or woman or doll's back while the mother was yeah. speaking. Yeah. Um. So let's do some stats. Skinner Inc. is a 2023 movie. Despite what Wikipedia says, it pisses me off when they do this. Skinner Inc premiered at some Canadian film festival in 2022, and then it opened in theaters this past January. So, Wikipedia, the free online encyclopedia that anyone can edit, calls Skinamarinka 2022 film, and that's just wrong. Yeah. It's when the movie was released, not when the movie premiered. The movie cost 15,000 Canadian dollars. Yes. That was to the which, budget of this movie. To which Genie had said, how did they spend that much? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. 
And I think that's a damn valid point. Yeah. But but it cost fifteen thousand dollars to make and it friggin' shows. I mean, the special effects are gumby level. Yes. Very gumby special effects. Um, this movie cost fifteen thousand dollars. It made over two million dollars at the box office. Holy shit! That is a ridiculously successful take at the box office. So whether you love this movie or you hate it, Skin Marink was a huge hit. So this is my idea for the sequels. Number two, two Skinner, two Marink. That's the title for the second one, okay? The third one, we just call it Skin of Marine 3, but here's the thing. It stars Richard Pryor. And it's actually, like, really funny. It's a comedy. Okay. Uh, Skin of Marine 4, that's the one where Skin of Marine fights Ivan Drago. Nice. Drago! Top of the mountain. Drago! I'm Skin of Marine! Uh. Fighting him. So that, that's four. Skin of Marine, five. Ghidorah finally shows up. That's going to be really exciting with King Ghidorah in the mix. Uh, Skin of Marine, six. In space! Skin of Marine, seven. By then, the box office will be in the shitter, so we'll have uh, James Gunn take over. It'll be renamed The Skin of Marine. It'll star Margot Robbie. And then by Skin of Marine, eight, they can just reboot it. Um. Well, I would <clears throat> like to see Skin of Marine 2 uh, be similar to this, except I would like it all to be dramatic and creepy shots of turtles. Just all different types of turtles, but at a weird angle and strangely lit. Uh, yeah, they can include Mitch McConnell and Dwight D. Eisenhower uh, okay. as turtles. I will accept them as turtles. Dwight D. Eisenhower. Yes. Uh. Oh, Bunny. Um. It today is Easter. Happy Easter, Bunny. Ah. Uh, did you see what I did? Uh, oh. Uh, I Easter means that it's no longer Lent, so and I gave up cussing for Lent, so I'm happy to say here on the podcast, jizz. <laughs> oh, so Lent's uh, over? Huh? So Lent is over? Lent is over. Yeah. You are you are free to curse now. I I, I gave up two things. For Lent, I gave up uh, cursing, which was fucking hard as fucking shit, and posting thirst traps on Instagram to rile up one of my exes. <laughs> okay. So, it, I'm not going to say which ex, but his or hers name rhymes with Bob. <laughs> Bob Rob. Bomb. Bob Ross. I'm not dating Bob Ross dating over here. Bob. I can't imagine making love to Bob Ross. Okay. Yeah, Eleanor, you should leave. Ah, oh, dang it! She didn't leave. Okay, I was gonna, I was gonna start riffing hard on Bob Ross doing it. Uh, so this cartoon specifically that's playing right now, the the um, bunny rabbit of a m magician, yeah. they they did like a small bit of this on a loop over and over again, and that part creeped me out. This is a very creepy oh, film. It's about a vibe. <laughs> yeah, this is it, it was in black and white and the rabbit kept 
appearing and disappearing over and over again. Yeah. Yeah, I found this one to be especially creepy. But it, it was... It, it, this movie, this movie, I don't even know how to explain it. Okay, so this movie was made on the cheap by a YouTuber... He's from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and his name is Kyle Edward Ball. This was his first feature film. He has a YouTube channel. And so for years now, people have sent him their nightmares, and he tries to recreate them on the cheap. Okay. So, yeah, this movie feels like it's a crazy, mad, scary film. Not for my generation. But for young people who don't know horror movies like we do, like uh, like I like I honestly think that uh, my twenty one year old Amber would be scared shitless by uh, Skinner Marine. I just showed her the tr the trailer and she freaked out. Really? Meanwhile, my wife is just there going, "Can he just stop saying in this house over and over again? I am so annoyed with him." But El but uh, yeah, Amber was freaking out. So this is like a this is like a horror movie for the TikTok generation. You know? Yes. But like but maybe for someone who thinks the Chucky movies are hilarious and who doesn't have to be doesn't have to be have explained to them who Herschel Gordon Lewis is, if you've seen more than one trauma film, then this Skinner Inc. may or may not be for you. Yeah. Yeah, because the movie was creepy. It wasn't scary. I wasn't scared at all. Okay, it was just creepy. But it was a vibe. It would make a very good follow up to a Crispin Glover movie. Really? Because I was gonna say Begotten. Oh God, yes, Begotten. Yeah, I got Begotten vibes off of this. And do you know how weird your movie has to be that someone can say the sentence, I'm getting begotten vibes? Yeah. Weird. I don't know. I Every time I think about begotten, I, I, I've i got it linked to my head with, Dennis, there's some lovely filth down here. <laughs> nice. Hey, um... Do you think you could explain the plot of Skinner Inc? Uh, yeah. Well, there's this guy, and he runs a savings and loan. Uh, okay. and and he runs a savings and loan, and he's got this stupid ass Uncle Billy who loses eight thousand dollars. So the savings and loan is going to go out of business. He's going to wind up getting arrested. He runs off. And he's wishing he he never was going to be born, uh, so that he you know because life was horrible, and and then Clarence and Angel comes along and makes it like so he was never been born, and he goes around and he sees all the people that that he had known previously, and and they were all worse off because he was never born and none of them knew him or anything like that, and. The, the town was broken and horrible and taken over by the rich evil guy. And and, and then, and then he, he, it's Morbin time. Yeah, yeah. And then he wanted to come back to life and, and like, everything was more gooder again. Uh, and that, that, is, that, is, that is my theory of the plot. That makes sense. That makes of sense. Of Skin that makes and Marink. This movie is polarizing. It is either the scariest movie that you will ever see or it sucks ass. So, this is something I've never done before. Let's go to Letterboxd! Okay. I've got some Letterboxd reviews of Skinamarink. Letterboxd also says Skinamarink 2022. No, it's not a 2022 film. Okay. So, uh... Let me read to you a good one and then a bad one. Okay, so Skinner Marink, five stars watched by Freyer 
in November of 2022, reduced me to a child hand over my mouth, tears in my eyes, a pit in my stomach, surreal and familiar in the same stroke, liminal horror existing at the crossroads of comfortable mundane surroundings and everything we can imagine might be in the darkness on the other side. It leaves you anticipating the revelation, begging to see something that might reduce the horror with its tangibility. But when it finally begins to reveal itself, you can only shrink and cower and plead with it to stop. Now, here's a half so star. What movie was that watch. for? Because I want to see was... that movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here's another review. It's a half a star review watched by Megan. Why are all of you nerds crying? It's 100 minutes of looking at the corner of a ceiling. Megan, Megan, want to be a member? Got it. Want to be a member? No. I love how utterly polarizing this movie is. That those are reviews for the same movie. You know? Yeah. That is fascinating. What Jaws did to swimming in the ocean, Skinnamarink did to midnight potty trips. I got too scared and stopped watching. Don't stare into the dark for too long. You'll think you're seeing things. Um, if you watch it with a friend, Whoa. you guys are going to be talking the whole time like, oh, what's that? <laughs> Yes, exactly. And that's why you must watch it with somebody. Do you sh enjoy extended shots of walls, ceilings, or pitch black rooms? What about watching lights turn on and off? Are you a fan of movies with no story or character development? Are you easily impressed by After Effects filters that are notice noticeably on a loop? Making the movie look grainy beyond belief. Then have I got the movie for you. Um, an immersive horror that taps into the primordial fear of the unknown and of being a child having to go to the bathroom at 3 a.m. with a gnawing feeling like there's someone or something waiting for you in the shadows. See, now that's Fuck exactly you. what I was afraid of walking into this fucking movie. Pretentious bullshit like that. Yeah. Here's another review. Fuck you, I spent an hour and 40 minutes of my life staring at furniture while people whispered shit for no reason. So, yeah, yeah well, you know, uh, reaction is mixed. Reaction is mixed. Uh, here's why I think it was successful, though. I'll tell you this. This is why I think it was successful. Um, in July of 2022, the movie premiered at some Canadian film festival. It premiered and then it disappeared because it was like this weird, bizarre, experimental film. But then, uh, um, due to the film festival's own personal f up, a digital copy of the film leaked online. Uh huh. And so suddenly, anyone anywhere can just watch Skinnamarink whenever they want. And then, a uh, word of mouth, and then the TikTok got, generation got a hold of it, and basically. It's Blair Witch for my kids. Yeah. 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 You know? It's, it really is sort of, it really is like Blair Witch for a new generation. Word of mouth spread. And then suddenly it's playing in over 600 AMC theaters. And you got to give the movie credit that it, a $15,000 budget, it played in my small ass Oklahoma town. Yeah. You know, there were Coca-Cola commercials before I saw this movie in my super small town in the middle of nowhere, Oklahoma. Good for you. I saw the movie once at home and it was a bootleg. It was the bootleg. And and I was like, man, I must have gotten a bad copy or something. Is this a cam? Is this like Damn a bootleg? Anymore. Is this like a bootleg that someone filmed with a handheld video camera? <laughs> oh, wait, no. This is what the movie looks like. I was really proud of myself last week when I told you, like, like, no, this is just what the movie is. Yeah. It just looks like this. So, uh, I, I think 
that you know now it's on Shutter. It's a yeah. big hit on Shutter, and people are discovering it there. I, I saw the movie at home. I didn't. I was by myself. I was bored. I didn't like it. But then it opened up for one week in my super small town, and I said, you know, I hate this movie. I hate it. I was not in any way interested in Skin of Murphy, <laughs> But I, but I, I want to hate it in a theater. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Like, one guy made this. One guy with a YouTube channel made a movie, and I hated it. But I support independent horror. I will go and watch your freaking movie in theaters, and I'm glad that I did. Yeah. You know? Because now this movie will exist. And I'll be able to say, I saw that in theaters. I saw Clue the day it came out. I got the Miss Scarlet did it ending. <laughs> and I am proud of that. And now I can, I saw Cats five times in theaters. This is when Betty Boop was a dog. I forgot about that. Yes. Betty Boop was a dog. For a while, and she invented twerking. So, um, in a, we didn't get to any of the alternate topics, including Indiana Jones and the attempt to make up for the last one. Yeah. Um, how the WWE is has become the Titanic. Uh, Holy Week and the fact that I can cuss. We set up a tip jar in the house. Uh huh. A couple of days ago. It, it it's a big uh, wooden slat, and it says "Home is where the mom is," and there's like a jar connected to the sign. So we just you locked up. Throw tips on the jar, and so now if you want a <coughs> tip jar, <coughs> so we've got about we've got about uh. 60 cents so far okay so that's good we got about 60 cents so far so that's good uh oh and i have this idea for an album where insane clown posse does broadway hits so i'm kind of workshopping that hopefully that, that is an interesting idea yeah magical mr mistopheles bitch you know, something like that. I was thinking more Pirates of Penzance. Ah. And and what, what the Insane Clown Posse could do with that in between whippets. I am a major of a modern major general. I don't know how that song goes. <laughs> I have an audition next weekend. I heard. Congrats. I have an audition to possibly perform, do a live story time as May Lynn, as the trans woman I am, on stage at Pride. And uh, I probably won't get it, but like the worst thing they can do is say no. So yeah. I've got an audition to perform at Pride. Well, I think just, that's awesome. Just and also, I'm do your act how you've always done it. Yeah, you that's know what I figured. how to do it, you know. That's what I figured, except I can do trans jokes. Well, sure. Uh, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. May Lynn has never done a live story time before, so I'm nervous. I hope I get <laughs> it. Uh, buddy! Yes. Next week. Uh, I thought this movie might be difficult, might be hard, so I thought, well, when we watch like a Begotten or something like that, we need to cleanse the palate. Yes. So, um, we're watching a little known and uh, long since, little known, little remembered and long since banned Flintstones movie. It premiered in 2001 and it was an attempt to reboot the Flintstones to a mature adult audience. Okay. It is there an were adult. A yeah. It is an adult Flintstones movie. It is called The Flintstones on the Rocks. 
Cartoon Network refuses to ever air it again. And the one thing that can tie everything together, thank you, archive.org. <laughs> For all of your service. Because it's, if you want to watch it, it's there. It so, might surprise you. So when you're saying adult, you're meaning grown up. Yeah, we're we're, yeah, we're not seeing Betty banging her head against the headboard, are we? No, oh, no, okay. no. Well, see it? No. <laughs> okay. Hear it? Eh, that, that might be something different. But look, you don't see anything. Okay. Some things are inferred. It's we'll get there. That's for next week. Not that it matters either way, frankly. Okay. And it's and just, uh, I want to know uh, what I'm walking into. Yeah, uh, it's it's not porn. It did play on the Cartoon Network, but for some strange reason, it came out and um, it was very controversial for its time. And uh, Cartoon Network did ban it. It's not available on streaming. It's not available on any uh, streaming service. It's it, they don't rerun it. It's not available on some website or anything other than archive.org. Uh, yeah, and yeah, it was just kind of forgotten. Gee, I wonder why people don't remember this, uh, Flintstones movie. It only came out, uh, when? That's right. The beginning of September, September 2001. Yeah. I'm pretty sure everybody was free around then. Yeah. Nothing but, yeah. on anybody's mind in particular. Not nothing on anybody's mind, really. That would cause them to forget the Flintstones on the rocks, where people do it. Okay. But um, uh, but that's next week. The Flintstones on the rocks. Now that I'm looking back at this week, the highs, the lows, the ups, the downs, the lefts, the rights. Skinamarink, we finally got to it. We didn't finish the presidents. The National Lawn Dart Association. I think this has been a pretty good Easter tacular episode of the Pope on Film. And I did such a good job that we're here at the end and no one has any clue that I was high as balls. <laughs> I passed it off. Now no one knows that I was super freaking high. This oh, has on. been a damn good episode. Yeah, I agree. I think this has been a wonderful episode, and I love it. And I, I, I concur with your assessment, good sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend May Lynn, and on behalf of Natasha and Mal, who was sitting here the whole time helping me out when I got too high, she she was a really good, he was a really good, like, uh, like a Ed McMahon. Yeah. Like uh, whatever the Mexican is that Jimmy Kimmel owns. Yes. Jimmy Kimmel owns a Mexican. Uh, on behalf of everyone, I would just like to say, Thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. Do 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 do. I my kids are all outside playing. It is a beautiful ass Easter. Oh, it is, is it beautiful outside? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put on a shirt and I'm going to join them. But first, do 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 do. I nailed the video. Yes, you did. Because it's saying the end. I nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. See you next week, everybody. I really thought it'd be done by now. <laughs> wow. Well, I guess it's time to finally talk about the one thing I